Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and this is Discussion 14, Investment, Property, and Other Non-Current Assets. At the end of the video, you should be able to define investment property, enumerate and explain different kinds of investment properties, explain the initial recognition, initial measurement, and subsequent measurement of investment properties, differentiate cost model from the fair value model, and enumerate and explain other non-current financial assets. This is your lecturer, Kevin Troy. M. Chua. Before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. For all of your questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinar and speakership invites, please send me a message at kevintroydachua1994 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for your utmost support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and may these videos continue to help students in their online learning and academic development. May these videos continue to help teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies. Thank you very much for trusting Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH as your online learning partner. Maraming salamat po. In the last lesson, we discussed about investments in equity and debt securities and now we're ready to move on to another line item in the Statement of Financial Position Non-Current Asset section which is investment property. So let's define an investment property. Investment property is a property which is a land or a building or part of a building or pwedeng pareho held to earn rentals or for capital appreciation or for both. So basically, if you are handling an asset which is the purpose is to earn rentals or either for capital appreciation or both of them, then that will be classified as an investment property. So some of the examples include land held for long-term capital appreciation. So kung hindi siya ginagamit ng company as owner-occupied or wala pong ibang gamit sa kanya na parang pang property plant and equipment and it's just only being held for capital appreciation, then that land is an investment property. Or Another one is the land is held for a currently undetermined future use. So if the future use is currently undetermined, naga appreciate pa rin po yung value ng asset. So basically, the land will also be uh, reported as investment property. Okay, and then we also have building which is leased out under an operating lease and a vacant building leased. Uh, or sorry, held to be leased out uh, under an operating lease as well. And then we also have property that is being constructed or developed for future use as investment property. So basically, if the asset construction or the asset that is being developed or constructed is talaga pong ang, uh, ang kanyang magiging uh, silbe sa company is an investment property, then basically the property that is being constructed or developed will be recorded as an investment property. Okay, so ano naman po yung mga bagay na hindi po dapat i-record or I recognize as investment property which is outside the scope of the standard of investment property which is International Accounting Standard 40. Number one, property held for use in the production or supply of goods or services or for administrative purposes. Familiar po ba? Yan po ay yung asset na ginagamit po natin para makapag-produce ng, ng, uh, ng goods or services or ginagamit po natin for administrative purposes like yung ating po mga office building na ginagawa po natin company office premises. Sounds familiar po, eh, di ba? Yan po ay property plan and equipment. Okay? So that will not be recognized as investment property. We also have property held for sale in the ordinary course of business or in the production or construction of development para maibenta. So, sounds familiar din po ulit. Lahat po ng asset na ginagamit natin for sale in the ordinary course of the business will qualify under IAS2 inventories. We also have property that is being constructed or developed pero para sa third parties. Okay? And then we also have owner-occupied property under IAS 16, kasama po lahat ng property held for future use as an owner-occupied property. So, yun po yung silbi niya. So, basically, hindi po talaga siya pang investment property. Or, either, uh, dinedevelop pa lang or held for future development, pero ang pagagamitan po sa kanya, owner-occupied property din po siya. Or, property occupied by employees and owner-occupied property 
awaiting disposal. So, lahat po yan ay under ng IAS 16 and not IAS 40. And lastly, property that is leased to another entity under finance lease. Hindi din po yan magka-qualify as an investment property. Now, since marunong na kayo mag-classify kung kailan siya IAS 2, IAS 16, at IAS 40, Paano naman po ang magiging recognition niya? Investment property should be recognized as an asset when it is probable that future economic benefits are associated with the property or with the asset and, sorry, benefits are associated with the property will flow to the entity. Yan naman yung gusto natin, di ba? And the cost of the property can be measured reliably. Okay, so yun po. To recognize po yung ating investment property, future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity and there is a reliable measurement of the cost of the property. Now, in initial recognition po natin, ang initial measurement in the recording in the book of accounts, ang ating pong investment property is initially measured at cost. Kasama po lahat ng transaction cost pero hindi po kasama ang startup cost, abnormal waste, or other operating losses na na-incur natin bago po natin magamit or ma-held yung investment property on the planned level of occupancy na gusto natin or ine-expect natin sa kanya. Okay? So, cost and transaction cost pero hindi po kasama yung startup cost, abnormal waste, and any other initial operating losses. Now, subsequently, after initial recognition, paano naman po natin siya i-recognize in the financial statement or how will we How will we be presenting them the financial statements is we are being permitted to choose between the fair value model or the cost model. Okay? So, i-explain natin tig-isa yung fair value model and cost model na yan. Okay? One method must be adopted for all of the entities' investment property. So, take note of that. One method lang po ang i-adopt natin sa lahat. So, if you have three investment properties, hindi po pa pwede na yung isa ay naka-cost model tapos yung dalawa ay naka-fair value model. Hindi po pwede yun. Okay? Now, pwede po natin gawin is magkaroon ng change from cost to fair value or fair value to cost model kung sa tingin po ng company that it will be a more appropriate presentation for the uh, investment property. However, there is a passage, passage talaga, there is a mention in the IAS 40 that meron pong uh, parang unlikely naman po na mag-change ang isang entity na galing na sila sa fair value model, gusto nilang mag-cost model. Okay? Malalaman nyo kung bakit kapag ka explain na natin ano po ba yung fair value model na yan at yung cost model na yan. Let's first talk about the fair value model. Investment property is remeasured at fair value. Ano po yung fair value? The price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction in the market. Ibig sabihin po, ang basis natin ng fair value kung magkano siya sa merkado. Okay, ganun po siya. So basically, in the financial statements, when the investment property is, uh, ang ginagamit po nating model sa kanya is the fair value model, ang nire-recognize po natin sa kanya in every increase or decrease in the fair value or any changes in the fair value of the investment property, mag-check po tayo ng gain or loss. Okay? Depende po sa increase or decrease ng no fair value, which is included in the profit and or loss for the period in which it arises. Now, ang fair value daw po ng isang investment property should reflect the actual circumstances in the market at the date of reporting or basically the balance sheet date. The best evidence of fair value is normally given by current prices on an active market for similar property. Okay? So basically, ang magiging basis mo, similar properties na hawak mo. Diba? If you are handling buildings, syempre, you compare it with an active market of buildings. Parang ganun po. Okay? No? Uh, basically, in the same location and condition and subject to similar contracts. Mas pareho, mas similar yung dating nung other active market participation and transactions natin, it's a much better um, reflection of the fair value of the asset. Now, in any case that those information is not available, then what you do is to consider current prices of properties of a different nature. So, medyo lalayo ka ng konti kasi yun yung next available information. 
Okay? Recent prices on less active markets and then magkakaroon lang din po ng adjustments on economic conditions or your last resort is gagamit ka na po ng discounted cash flow projections based on estimates po ng future cash flows. In any case, that those information will really be not available for fair value of the asset. In any case that the company elects to use the cost model for accounting for investment property for subsequent measurement para lang po tayong nag PPPE. Okay? Which is nagdi-depreciate tayo, cost less accumulated depreciation and you'll be also testing it for impairment or the possibility of impairment. Okay, so cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses. Para ka lang din pong nag property plant and equipment kung nag cost model ka. Okay, now, meron po tayong instances na tinatawag po natin classification transfer. Parang galing sa IAS 2, mas fit pala siyang IAS 40. Or IAS 16, mas fit pala siyang IAS 40 kasi nagbabago yung gamit mo sa kanya or kung paano mo siya i-handle nagbabago. Okay? So, transfers to or from investment property should only be made when there is a change in use. And these are the examples of those evidences of transaction. First, Commencement of owner occupation. So, dati po siyang investment property naging owner occupied. Eh, hindi na po siya dapat investment property. Okay? Or, pwede pong dati siyang investment property pero nakita mo na mas useful siya in the normal business operations to generate revenue when selling. So, ang gagawin mo po is from investment property magiging IAS 2 inventories. O di po kaya natapos naman po yung owner occupation natin sa kanya so it will be transferred from owner occupied property, gagawin mo na siyang investment property kasi baka i-handle mo na siya for capital appreciation imbes na owner occupation. Or commencement of an operating lease to another party so gagawin mo na rin po siyang investment property. Or if there is an end of construction or development, basically lipat mo na po siya uh, transfer mo na yung classification as investment property. Okay, now what about selling? Eh, nabanggit natin kanina yung selling. Tatandaan nyo po lagi, hindi po porke binenta yung investment property is or there is an indication for sale, eh, ililipat mo muna siya as inventory at saka mo siya maibibenta. Hindi po. When an entity decides to sell an investment property without development, the property is not reclassified as inventory but hanggang maibenta siya ang classification niya, investment property. Kailan mo po ire-reclassify ang isang investment property as inventory kapag ka po mag-change na yung uh, parang uh, pag uh, yung decision ng company na this is more better when we sell it on normal business operations. Remember that inventories are being sold at normal business operations in which that is their source of revenue. So kung hindi po yun yung purpose, at ang purpose lang po talaga is merely to sell the investment property, then that is just a mere sales transaction nung mismong investment property at hindi mo siya kailangan i-reclassify as inventory. Nire-reclassify lang po as inventory kung magiging ang purpose niya na is sale in the normal business operations to generate revenue. Okay? But if the sales transaction is merely a sale of the investment property itself, then it will not be reclassified until it is derecognized. Okay, so here, these are some of the rules that we need to apply on transfers. Na nabinggit natin kanina. Okay, first is, for a transfer from investment property carried at fair value, so naka-fair value model ka daw po dun sa investment property mo, gusto mong gawing owner-occupied property or gagamit ka na ng IAS2 kasi ibebenta mo na siya on normal business operations as inventory, Yung dati daw pong fair value ng investment property, yun na ang magiging cost of the asset under its new classification as IAS 16 or IAS 2. Okay? Yun yung pinanggalingan niyang amount eh. So, yung fair value ng investment property, yun ang magiging cost niya na sa bago niyang classification. Pagka naman po tinransfer natin from owner-occupied property to investment property at fair value model, 
ang gagawin po natin is apply po natin yung IAS 16 pero revaluation model. Okay? IAS 16 should be applied up to the date of reclassification. Any difference arising between the carrying amount under IAS 16, so syempre, check mo yung carrying amount ng asset bago mo siya i-transfer as investment property. And then, the fair value is dealt with as a revaluation. Remember, nung nasa IAS 16 tayo, ang revaluation model po ay gumagamit ng information about fair value. So, from IAS 16, gagawin mong IAS 40 na fair value model, then, ang pinaka-fit po na model na gamitin mo, nung nasa IAS 16 ba siya, bago mo i-transfer as IAS 40 is the revaluation model. For a transfer from inventories to investment property at fair value model, kung ano man po yung difference ng fair value at the date of transfer versus yung previous carrying amount nung inventory pa siya, i-recognize mo in profit or loss. Kasi po ang mangyayari, kung ano man po yung carrying amount niya nung inventory pa siya at magiging investment property na siya at fair value, you need to check the fair value of the investment property nung investment property na siya. So, any increase or decrease in amount due to changes in fair value that will be recognized as profit or loss. In the profit or loss, rather. Okay? And then, when the entity completes construction or development of an investment property that will be carried at fair value, any difference din po nung ating uh, fair value versus the previous carrying amount, ganun din po. Recognize po natin any increase or decrease in profit or loss. When an entity uses the cost model, paano naman po kapag ka po yung investment property natin is naka-cost model? No problem tayo dyan kasi basically kung ang PPE mo or inventories mo is talagang syempre at cost yun, ba? Diba? So wala tayo magiging problema. Cost to cost lang ang ating magiging transfer, ba? Diba? Transfers between categories do not change in the carrying amount of the property transferred and they do not change the cost for the property for measurement or disclosure purposes. Kasi wala naman po tayong kailangan i-check dyan na fair value. Dahil cost model to cost model lang po. In any case, magkakaroon ka ng inventory or PPE transfer to investment property. Okay, an investment property should be the recognized and disposal or when the investment property is permanently withdrawn kung wala na siyang silbi, di ba? If there is no future economic benefits expected from the investment property, so proceed na, okay? The gain or loss on disposal should be calculated as the difference between the net disposal proceeds or as how we usually call it, the selling price at disposal and versus the carrying amount of the asset. At yung difference po nila should be recognized in the income statement. Okay, so later po may problem tayo tungkol dyan. Okay, pasok ko lang po sandali yung other non-current assets na baka hindi natin maklasify as financial assets at fair value through PL, through OCI, or amortized cost. So basically, lahat sila ilalump mo na dun sa line item na other non-current assets. So the following assets are classified as long-term assets since they are funds set aside for non-current purposes. So meron po tayong sinking fund or redemption fund na sinaset aside mo Particularly para po sa long-term bonds payable. Okay? So basically, since the fund is set aside for a non-current purpose, the fund itself will be classified as non-current asset. But kung yung babayaran mong bond gamit yung sinking fund, ay uh, malapit na po pala, no? it becomes due within 12 months after the end of the reporting period, the sinking fund will be reclassified as a current asset. Dahil yung babayaran mo ay current na po. No? Currently due na siya within 12 months after the reporting period. Okay? Preferential redemption fund is a, set, is a fund set aside by the company to ensure the eventual redemption of preference shares. We also have plant expansion fund or yung fund po na sineset aside po natin para po sa future projects ng company ng expansion, increased volume of operations, or additional acquisition po ng mga properties dahil gusto mo nga mag-expand. Contingency fund naman po yung sinaset aside natin. In any case, nagkakaroon po tayo ng, uh, ng uh, lawsuits or uh, tax disputes na may kailangan ka pa palang bayarang mas malaking taxes or penalties. Ayan po. 
it will fall under contingency fund. And then insurance fund naman po yung sinaset aside natin in any case, tayo po ay maka-encounter ng mga risk katulad ng fire, typhoon, explosion, or any other casualties na hindi natin inaasahang mangyari. Okay, let's proceed with discussion of some problem solving about investment property. Problem number one. Jungkook Company entered into the construction of a condominium in Mandaluyong City. The entity's board of directors decided to hold the said property for purposes of earning rentals. The construction of the condominium was completed and placed in service on January 1, 2019. The cost of the construction is 50 million and the useful life is 25 years with a residual value of 5 million. An independent valuation expert provided that the fair value at the end of each year is 55 million for 2019, 53 million for 2020, and 60 million for 2021. The first question is how much is the depreciation expense for each of the three years under the cost model and how much is the gain or loss from changes in fair value for the three years in any case that we will be using the fair value model. Ganito lang po ang technique sa answering ng uh, problems natin ng investment property. Mindset lang po natin ganito. Pag cost model, i-depreciate ko lang siya na parang property plan and equipment. Ang pakialam ko sa kanya ay asset cost, residual value, and useful life in years. Pero kapag ka ang tanong naman po sa atin ay naka-fair value model, wala po tayong pakialam sa cost ng asset, sa residual value, at sa useful life niya na para natin siya i-depreciate. Hindi po natin papansinin ng ganun. Dahil pag fair value model, ang gusto po natin makita yung increase or decrease in fair value at the end of each reporting period. So, for question number one, how much is the depreciation expense each year? Ganto lang po. Kung magkano yung cost ng investment property, which is 50 million, ide-deduct po natin yung residual value na 5 million, that is your depreciable amount, divided by the life in years, your annual depreciation is 1,800,000. And that is already your depreciation for 2019, 2020, and 2021. You know how to do this already because this is how we do it in property plan and equipment. So, dyan na rin po papasok yung mga tanong na how much is the accumulated depreciation, how much is the carrying value of the investment property, ganun lang din po kung paano natin gawin sa property plan and equipment. Pero, pagdating po natin ng fair value model, magkano daw po yung gain or loss? In 2019, 2020, and 2021. So, ang papansinin lang po natin yung information about fair value. Wala na po tayong pakialam sa residual value at sa life in years. So, ganito lang po. Nung uh, siya po ay uh, na-complete noong 2019, January 1, 50 million siya. But at the end of 2019, ang kanyang fair value na is tumaas to 5 million, there is a gain of 5 million for 2019. Okay, how much will be recorded or reported as uh, the investment property at December 31, 2019? Basically, yung bagay nyo ng fair value, which is 55 million. Now, for next year, bumaba siya ng, 3, ng uh, 53 million, so magkakaroon ka ng 2 million na loss for 2020. Eh, umangat uli, no? Going to 60 million. So, magkakaroon ka ng 7 million na gain for 2021. So, ganun lang. Pag tumaas yung, va yung fair value, record mo siya as gain. Kapag ka po bumaba, re record mo po siya as loss. Ganun lang po kasimple kapag ka fair value model. May depreciation ka pong uh, iintindihan kapag ka fair value model? Wala po. Kasi po, ang i-check mo sa kanya is increases or decreases in fair value. And that is our problem number one. Let's proceed to problem number two. Mayora Company purchased an investment property on January 1, 2017 for 4 million. The property had a useful life of 40 years. And on December 31, 2021, the investment property had a fair value of 4,500,000. However, the property was sold for 3,800,000 at that same year end. The entity uses the cost model, how much is the carrying value before the disposal, and if there is any gain or loss on disposal na ire report natin sa income statement. Okay. Kapag ka po ganyang problem, titignan mo yung problem kung ano po ba ang ginamit na model. So, dahil po cost model, hindi po natin papansinin any information on fair value at the time of disposal. 
Kasi fair value model po yan. So, ang tanong, how much is the carrying value of the investment property before the disposal? Okay, so, the cost of the investment property po at the time of acquisition is 4 million. Wala po tayong residual value. So, that will also be your depreciable amount, which is 4 million. Divide po natin by 40 years na life ng asset. Annual depreciation po natin is 100,000. Now, check po natin. Buong depreciation po niya ng 2017 and then 2018. 2019, 2020, and before disposal noong December 31, 2021, so 5 years po yung dinilaanan, multiply po natin by 5 years, the accumulated depreciation of the investment property before disposal is 500,000. So, as how we do it, under the cost model, if the cost is 4 million and the accumulated depreciation is 500,000, then the carrying value of the investment property before disposal is 3,500,000. Now, binigyan po tayo ng selling price na 300, 3 million, sorry, 800,000. Yan na lang po yung i-compare natin sa, ca sa carrying value to get the gain or loss on disposal. So, for question number 2, the selling price of 3 million, 800,000, less the carrying value at the end of the year, which is 3 million, 500,000, the gain on sale of investment property is 300,000, which will be reported in your income statement. Di ba madali lang? Okay? Pinansin pa po ba natin yung fair value ng $4,500,000? No, because we are under the cost model. Okay, for problem number 3, Gab Company owns 3 investment properties all purchased on January 1, 2020. All properties have a useful life of 20 years. Tapos binigyan ko po ng information on their fair value. Paano daw po pag cost model at pag fair value model. Sige nga po, try po natin i-apply yung mga natutunan natin for problems 1 and 2. Pause the video to give you more time to answer. Try to answer the problem, then let's go back and discuss the problem. Okay, assuming that you have already tried answering the problem, sige po, discuss na po natin yung problem number 3. Number 1, under the cost model, how much is the depreciation expense to be reported on 2020 and 2021? Sabi ko po sa inyo, Kapag ka po cost model, hindi mo papansinin yung fair values kasi i-depreciate mo siya. So, ganito lang po. Since lahat po sila ay 20 years, si property M po ay cost divided by 20 years, 125,000. Property N po is cost divided by 20 years, 200,000. Property L po is cost divided by 20 years, 185,000. Dahil lahat naman po sila ay binili noong January 1, full year depreciation po tayo, no problem. Annual depreciation is 510,000. So, depreciation for 2020 is 510,000. Depreciation for 2021 is 510,000. Okay? Pinansin po natin yung fair value? Hindi po kasi naka-cost model po tayo. Paano naman po pag fair value model? So, hindi na po natin papansinin yung depreciation information. Doon na lang po tayo sa increases or decreases in fair value. Gagawan nyo po ng ganitong table. So, for property M, 2,500,000 naging 2,700,000. So, gain na 200,000. 4 million for property N, naging 3,800,000 lang yung fair value my loss na 200,000. 3,700 bumaba ng 3,600,000. ,000. Loss po tayo ng 100,000. Then get the net amount 100,000 loss po tayo sa 2020. Papunta naman po 2021 from 2,700,000 ,000, bumaba ng 2,400,000. ,000. Loss po tayo ng 300,000. For property N, 3,800,000 ,000, tumaas ng 4,200,000. 400,000 po ang gain. And then from property L, 3,600,000, going up to 3,850, may gain din po tayo to 50,000. For 2021 naman po, ang gain po natin is 350,000. Ganun lang po. Yun po ang gain or loss from changes in fair value. Hindi na po natin pinansin yung depreciation information dahil naka fair value model naman po tayo. Okay, that's the end of our discussion for investment property. In our next lesson is the last lesson for Intermediate Accounting Part 1, Biological Assets. 
Again, please like, share, and subscribe to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and hit the notification bell button to alert you of the latest video lessons. For all of your questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinar and speakership invites, please send me a message at kevintroy1994 at gmail.com. This has been Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH College Edition and we are still at Intermediate Accounting 1. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise forevermore. Thank you and have a great day. Sarangeyo.